for this problem, the directions for this problem say use synthetic division to find each function value, verify your answer using another method. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a function. They say apply synthetic division. They say g of 3. So you might be thinking to yourself, OK, g of 3. Well, that means I could plug in g of 3. Because remember, there's two different ways we could determine if it was a 0. We could apply synthetic division. And by applying synthetic division, if we got a remainder of 0, we knew that our 0 of our polynomial was a 0. And then we could use the remainder theorem. And remember what the remainder theorem was, is plugging in your 0 that you're trying to solve. So I'd have 3 to the 6th power minus 4 times 3 to the 4th power plus 3 times 3 squared plus 2. All right, can I borrow your calculator? Because I do not know what 3 to the 6th power is off the top of my head. OK, so 3 raised to the 6th power equals 729 minus 4. I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, let me just write it just to make sure you guys are uh, we're all on the same page. Does everybody follow me? Okay. So now you just go and simplify um, the rest of that. So you do 729. And you get 434. Right? So therefore, is 3 a 0 of this polynomial? Yes. No, guys. This answer has to be 0. If you get this answer to be 0, then you know it's a remainder. So now, the next thing is it says use synthetic division. So I should have seen everybody apply synthetic division. So when we apply synthetic division, um, notice we're missing. Right? Remember synthetic division, guys. You have to make sure it's in descending order. And I saw a lot of students. Look at all the zeros. Look at all my missing terms. When you're applying synthetic division, you can't forget those zeros. So I apply synthetic division by taking my coefficient. So I have 1, 0, negative 4, 0, 3, 0, 2. All right, And this is how we use two different methods. We apply the remainder theorem, which is plugging in your suspected 0 into your function to determine what the remainder is, and then also using synthetic division. So I bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. That becomes a 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. 3 plus 45 is 48. 48 times 3 is going to be 96. So it would be, sorry, 96 plus 48 would be 144. 3 times 48, 96. Then 144 times 3 is going to be 288. And 288, so it'd be 3, 3 or 432, right, obviously. And then bring that up as 434. Now, obviously, you guys can look at this and say, oh, well, obviously, this is not a 0 of this polynomial because you have a remainder. But what is the important thing, Jessica, for you to understand is when you do synthetic division, and you get a remainder. That is the exact same number as when you take that 0 and plug it into the function. OK? So that's how we can verify by using two different methods. You can plug it into the function, or you can apply synthetic division. Either way, the remainder is going to be exactly the same as the value. So if you get something wrong, if you don't get the same number, you either did something wrong here, or you did something wrong there. All right, so make sure you go back and try to ver be very, very clear on what exactly process that you use for each one of those. All right.